everybody, Andrea Tarowski here for Study Well with Dental L from Dental L Tutoring. So I had an excellent question from a student the other day that said, or um, he said, you know, tell me the easiest ways to memorize and to know the interdental aids, the interproximal aids for patients, you know, whether they have spaces, whether they have tight teeth, whether they have loose teeth, whether they have this and whether they have that. Because if you'll notice, every textbook will tell you something different. And once you start to work in the real world, patients will ask you these things. And if you say to them, well, I know you have tight spaces, but I really don't know what's the best for you, whatever you want, you know. You don't sound professional, and that's just simply not true. Plus, if you're taking the board exam, you need to know these answers now because the questions will probably be on the board exam. So let's start simple first. So let's say you're a healthy patient, um, you know, brushes, flosses, all that fun stuff, but they say to you, um, Andrea, my teeth are pretty close, to, uh, pretty close together. What's the best floss for me? You need to tell them that a waxed floss is best for them. They may not agree with you or even me, I have tight teeth, but I don't like the feeling of the waxed floss. I don't know why, but for me, it's easier to slide through a thin piece of floss. Um, I like the Satin Floss by um, Oral-B. But on the board exam, the best answer is they want you to know that waxed floss is the best for tight spaces. And they say this because the waxed floss is just easier to sneak in. And once they have it in that area close to the actual sulcus, the wax on the floss can help to grab the plaque and bacteria a lot easier and quicker. And then they just have to move the floss up and that's that. For the board exam, they don't want you to recommend a thin floss for those with tight teeth because they think on the board exam that if they just simply slide the floss through and then back up again, it's not picking up any of the plaque necessarily. So I'll say it just one more time. On the board exam for tight contacts, so people with tight spaces or no spaces pretty much, in between the teeth, you want to recommend a waxed floss, okay? But let's say you have those patients who have minor spaces in between the teeth. And then as soon as you go to floss, they have what's called an open contact. So you're thinking, okay, I, I can floss here, but you have to make sure to hug the tooth on either side to pick up any of that plaque. But if their spaces are larger, and let's say they're starting to lose the bone support around the teeth, so you can now see that the patient is, is, um, is starting to get some areas of uh, recession, the floss isn't the best thing to do because as the patient's flossing, they're missing a lot of spots. So the best thing to recommend is those um, interproximal uh, brushes. Some refer to them as the interdental brushes also. But the key to remember with those is you need to show the patient how to use them because if they're using them too firmly or too hard, then what happens is they can start to actually take away some, some of the gum that's around that area. So they do have to be careful. Another thing to know is that the interproximal brush has to be slightly larger than the space. Because if the interproximal brush is smaller than the space, you're just simply sliding it through and it's not doing anything. If the interproximal brush is too large, then you could be doing damage to the gums that's on the teeth beside it. But it does have to be slightly larger than the space because if it's not, then it's not cleaning the um, areas sort of around that space. So something to make note of. So there, there are different sizes. And depending on the office you have, you might have a variety of sizes of these interproximal brushes, or you may just have one or two. But always make sure to tell the patient that even if, if they're buying those interproximal brushes on their own, make sure it's slightly bigger than the space they have. Because remember, in some areas of the patient's mouth, their teeth could be close together where a waxed floss is perfect for them. But then let's say in quad two, they have a few spaces where they're missing teeth or 
they have more advanced stages of bone loss in that specific area. So floss isn't the best for them. You need to give them that interproximal brush instead and make sure it's slightly bigger than that space. So as you see, it depends on the patient, it depends on their teeth, and it depends on them too because you will find the patients that say to you, um, I don't floss. I don't want to floss. I will never floss. <laughs> then you kind of go, oh, okay, but I want you to, but you have to offer them something else. So other alternatives to that patient is to offer them um, a floss wand um, if they're okay with wrapping the floss around the wand and then using that for each area instead, or a floss pick where they're a lot easier to use. I don't like them myself because I've tried to use them before and I find the floss in the floss picks are too, um, they're not very soft, but some patients love them. And that patient that tells you they never want to floss and won't start, at least offer them the floss pick and say it is super, super easy. All you have to do is do this, you know, if you're, watching TV, watching a movie in a car, but not driving the car, but if you're waiting for somebody or in the parking lot or something, those are excellent. So just a few tips for you. Um, so never let a patient tell you that they don't want to floss and they will never start. Try to talk to them more about it. Explain why it's so important to floss and then offer them different methods that they might like more. Because trust me, there's so many out there I've only touched on a few, but this is as simple and as basic as it is. So stay tuned for another episode where I'll probably talk about things a lot further and more advanced, so to speak. So I hope this helped. Any questions, just let me know anytime and stay tuned for the next episode.